All right, so today I just wanted to provide you with a quick introduction into Illustrator. We are going to be starting our mini minion projects here and wanted just to have you feel comfortable with the uh, Illustrator, the layout, and some of the tools before you get more in depth. Um, Illustrator is a great tool used to create original artwork. It's also a vector based software, so all your logos and text um, should be created here. <clears throat> And the reason why is because of that vector output, the shapes are created through mathematical equations. So when you zoom in and scale this, it's going to ultimately always be nice and curved. No matter what size you blow this up to, you're always going to have a nice smooth edge. So we, uh, we strongly emphasize making logos in this program. So no matter what size you scale it to, it's always going to look good. Photoshop, on the other hand, is a pixel-based software. And the problem with making logos there is you will tend to see pixel breakdown if the image is scaled too highly at, at a certain resolution. So we usually tend to um, tell students not to use Photoshop for their logo creations and stick with Illustrator. Uh, it's a great tool to use. Uh, it has a lot of really neat features and options that we will get into. A um, couple things, the, the main focus on the left hand side is known as your toolbar. There's all these different tools inside that you can pick and choose from. Anytime you see a white little arrow like that, that means there's more stuff hiding underneath. We're not going to show you all those tools today, but just know this is referred to as your toolbar. Um, on the bottom of the toolbar are your color tiles. You have a fill and a stroke color. And both of those allow you to make changes to shapes and text. On the right hand side over here, these are your windows or palettes. Everyone has some more editing features that you can choose from. If you can never find some of those, they're always going to be located here under the window option. And along with those two, toolbar and palettes, you also have a control bar up here that has even more functionality and features depending on which tool you have selected. There's also several pull down options which we will get into as the class progresses. Um, just some basic things to help you get started though. Uh, one would be creating shapes. So you have, let's say, a rectangle tool. You can make a simple shape just by clicking and dragging with the mouse. Once it's drawn, it's showing you what colors are available. This uh, shape can also be adjusted using your direct selection. You can scale it down, increase the size, move it, rotate it. Uh, so these are all nice little features that you have within the um, selection tool. Another key thing to point out when you're drawing shapes, if you hold down the shift key, it'll be a perfectly square or round piece, perfectly proportionate. You can easily copy shapes by holding down the option key. Um, the other feature you'll want to do a lot of the time is change the color. So you have your fill and your outline color. Right now the outline is set to none. So there's no outline on it or stroke on it at all. I can change the actual color of my object by using my swatches here. If I wanted to add an outline color, I would highlight the stroke so that that is now the top option. And you add it in, you may not be able to see it if it's not thick enough. You can adjust your stroke weight this way or on the menu bar over here as well. Um, these colors can be swapped around and adjusted. So there's lots of features with that. A couple other things with the shapes. You can easily copy shapes by holding down the option key. This works for any object in Illustrator. If you click and drag from the object, it'll copy it. Um, each one has settings that you can change. So for instance, if I have the polygon tool, it defaults to a six-sided object but if I want a triangle I need to click one time and tell it you know what I want three sides and now it'll let me put my three-sided object there same thing with the star you can do settings with your star clicking on your artboard will pull up this screen and that can be done with any shape even the rectangle has options and changes you can make this one is just width and height but if you need a specific size that's how you can do it so that's your general shape options as far as text goes, there's just a couple things I want to point out um, with uh, how you want to go about setting up the text. 
uh, the biggest kind of mistake I've seen people make is make a text box and then type in there. The problem with that is you're stuck with this huge text box and then when you want to make changes to your font, you need to highlight it, go up here and change the size, go up here and change the font. So there's a much easier way to do it, which is just taking your type tool, clicking once, and then typing what you want it to say. Then with your selection tool, you can adjust the size of it. You can change the font from your menu. You can, just like you would with a shape, you can adjust the color, add outline or stroke to it. So it functions just like a shape would um, as far as movements and sizing and adding color. Um, and you'll find that a lot of your basic logos are done just by combining shapes. So you can bring shapes and colors together and text and make some really cool um, logos when you're first starting out with Illustrator. So I'm just quickly going to do the London Underground logo just off the top of my head here. Um, there's a nice little align feature that lets you line up objects here. So a lot of times it's not going to be just one shape by itself. You're going to be combining multiple shapes together, subtracting shapes from each other. Uh, stacking text on top of color and you get some nice cool logos like that. The one other last thing I want to point out was your direct selection tool. So when you make a shape, your regular selection tool allows you to change the overall size of something, move it, scale it. The direct selection allows you to take isolated points so you can grab these anchor points and move them. These little white boxes, they're called anchor points, and you can grab them and adjust them accordingly. So direct selection so ch uh, changes individual pieces. Regular selection tool tools changes the whole size of the object. So that's a little basic information to get you started, and uh, you'll follow the rest of the mini projects to keep going.